How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And earlier, uh, about three days ago, I went into my garage looking for something, and I came across my old tub of early 2000s to 90s toys. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be to bring these in and show you guys something that isn't even being manufactured anymore? So without further ado, let's go ahead and reach into my little goodie bag and pull out a toy. And here is the first toy that I pulled out. Now this, I don't know if you guys recognize this or not, this is an old McDonald's toy for the TV show Jackie Chan Adventures that aired on Cartoon Network way back in the day. And the object of this toy was for it to answer your fortune, so it has yes, possibly, ask again, no, and very unlikely. So, this is what the front of the toy looks like. This is supposed to be uh, Jackie Chan. And then uh, you're supposed to flick his leg and uh, kind of ask a question. So, let's see. Will my YouTube channel be successful? Yes. Yes, it will be. Though, honestly, my YouTube channel is already successful because of all the uh, love and support you guys give me. So, thank you for that. And this is the first toy. Pull something else out of here. Uh, I'm going to give a little disclaimer. I didn't clean any of these toys, and some of them might be damaged. But this is an old uh, car. I'm not sure if this was mine or it was handed down to me from... Uh, one of my parents but um right here it says nasa united states usa 1096 the wheels down here are uh, a little wobbly they're one of those cheaper cars it looks like it's just kind of uh stuck in there and then uh the rods kind of move through these little um plastic little chambers right here so it's not very smooth. It's a very, uh, very cheap feeling car. I'm not sure um, what brand this is, but you can see if it's from being in a tub many years and from use, it's a little bit scratched up right there. The actual base of the car, though, is um, metal or aluminum. And if you look back here, it looks like the windshield in the back was busted out. Go ahead and see if it can move still. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, it can move pretty well. The uh, sticker is starting to come off though. If I knew how to repair old toys, I might give that a go, but I'm not really sure how to remove the yellowing and fix the sticker without completely ruining the decal. So yeah, this has been the NASA United States uh, vehicle. Oh man, here we go. Now this right here is a Rockshi, I believe. Or it might be the second version of the Rockshi. This is a Bionicle, and these were really popular in the early 2000s. And uh, man, oh man, I have so many Bionicle pieces, I can't even count. Half the tub which is filled with these things. And these are by Lego. I'm pretty sure you've heard of these. These are exceptionally popular. Um, this is one of the first um, lines that actually came out. This was, um, I think first it was the Toa, and then it was the Rockshi. And I think this is the second version of the Rockshi, actually. I still have the rubber band on there. And uh, let me move this down a little bit. As you can see, there's these little gears. You actually put these two pieces together, kind of sandwiched with all these pieces holding it. When you pull the lever, he moves his head forward like that. That was kind of its striking attack pose. And then right in here, let's pop that open. And it looks like it's missing its mask, but it would hold like a special mask that you could place in there. And then you could kind of swap them out and kind of pretend maybe they gave it uh, extra powers or something. All of these had different shields too, like this. So you can always like pose them and make them look like they were like, 
you know, an attack mode or something, like try to get them like boom or something like that. And uh, these were the bad guys, I believe. The Rakshi were the, uh, like, some of the enemies and whatnot. I can't quite remember, but I do know that I think I battled some of them in the Bionicle video game for the PlayStation 2. But yeah, this is a very uh, interesting piece of LEGO history. So, what do you guys think? Alright. And the next toy I have in here is really old. This is from Disney's Mulan. And I remember playing with this on the sidewalk down in uh, some different place in uh, California. I can't quite remember. It's one of those memories that are so fuzzy that you can't really, like, put a place on it. But I think I was around... Seven? Seven years old? Eight years old? Around that time. And I remember just trying to... Let's see, what's it say? Uh, McDonald's. It's a McDonald's toy. I remember um, just trying to get to get this thing to go as fast as it could because um, you roll this on the side of something and the faster you do it, um, the uh, faster this guy spins. But I don't know if he spins anymore. Let me go ahead and try it out. Yeah, I don't think this guy spins anymore. If you notice down here when I rotate it, the uh, thing is a little bit bent. So I think that that's going to cause it to wobble too much. But let's zoom in on his face real quick. I'm not quite sure what character this is from the show, or the movie, I mean. But uh, I was a really big fan of Mulan uh, growing up. I actually watched that Disney movie probably like once a day while I was like uh, a kid with my grandma. I just, it was my favorite thing to just throw on. It was kind of my version of uh, Frozen, I guess, for kids these days. But yeah, there's that one. And this one right here, you guys probably know who this guy is. This is a toy from the TV show Kim Possible, which I actually never watched. This is a McDonald's toy, I believe, and it was actually just something that I kind of picked up as a kid, and uh, I never watched the show. I was more of a Cartoon Network kid, and uh, I never really went to the Disney Channel, I'm going to be honest, um, or Nickelodeon very much. So I ended up watching Avatar and uh, The Fairly Odd Parents uh, fairly later in life, and uh, mostly the Avatar. But yeah, so this is the Kim Possible toy. It has a rotating propeller right here, and then on the back it also has a uh, little spinning one. But when you pull this down, it makes the uh, top propeller actually spin. So that is definitely something that uh, kids would be super fascinated with. I can imagine running up and down stairs and just kind of dropping it, trying to see if it would actually fly. All right, and now we have this next toy right here. Now this is from uh, Toy Story, but um, I don't think it's from the first Toy Story. I actually don't know the name of this character. I know that he is a horse, and it is from Toy Story, but I actually don't know much about it. It was part of a puzzle piece that you clip the characters together and try to get all of them in the uh, Happy Meal line. So, uh, interesting little kind of figurine Disney toy. And right here, we have Abu. And now this is a toy from Disney's Aladdin. And this is kind of funny. Um, how many Disney toys and uh, old kind of uh, McDonald's toys that I have kind of laying around. Maybe I thought uh, they would be worth money later in the future or something like that. But when you wind Abu's arms back like this, he actually moves his arms and I think he's supposed to be able to walk. <laughs> okay, maybe he's not supposed to be able to walk. Wait. No, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what he's supposed to do, but uh, he's definitely not uh, walking. But yeah, kind of a weird little uh, 
90s toy where uh, it doesn't quite have purpose, but uh, the moving parts were enough to fascinate a child, so... What do you guys think? If you were a kid growing up in the early 2000s, the 90s, chances are you still have one of these guys laying around. These are mighty beans. They were a very simplistic idea. It is just a cylinder with a metal ball in the uh, in the inside of here, and basically, mighty beans were these collectible beans. Um, they even actually have their own uh, kind of number and name. It's a uh, number sixty-three nerd bean, and uh, pretty much the goal of these was to just like have them roll up and down on your hand because the uh, inertia or the um, weight of the ball oh, inside of there is. Uh, supposed to make it move kind of like they're alive and it kind of feels nice in the hand um but they didn't they weren't very practical they're more of like you know you get a track and they maybe they work a little bit better but they weren't um the funnest thing they were just kind of something cool to collect now this is uh, another one of the beans it's a uh builder bean kind of cool and then right here I believe this one actually came with some kind of silicone molding around it, but I don't have it anymore. It's a bad breath bean. Kind of gross, look at that. Kind of reminds me of uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie with the uh, blue tongue. Blech. Let's move these guys to the side. And now this one's a two-parter. So right here we have uh, Esmeralda. Now this is a very old Disney toy from the, hunch, the Hunchback of uh, Notre Dame. And uh, it's her playing the, I believe that's a tambourine. And as you can see, it's even branded right down here. Um, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, Disney right there, made in uh, China. If you zoom in right there, you can see the beautiful details in the eyes. That's a little bit of sarcasm. <laughs> but uh, it's an old toy, so a lot of them didn't have uh, great facial uh, paintings back then. Let's put that one down. And next we have this guy right here. I have no idea who this guy is, I'm going to be completely honest. I know he was really important in the movie, but I don't know his name. But I do know he's part of the same set right here. And uh, you can kind of put him together, and maybe if you had like the Quasimodo and everything, you could have your own little uh, kind of retro uh, Disney figure set up. You know, you have the movie and then you have like all the collectible figures. That'd be kind of cool, huh? But yeah, there's those guys. Then we have another two-parter right here. Now, I don't remember anything about this show. I'm going to be completely honest, but I loved it to death. This is from Tailspin. It is a uh, Disney TV show, and uh, what's this? Oh, there's a little button back here. Oh, you can use it to rotate his head. That's kind of cool. But uh, I believe it had to do with like airplanes and stuff. Um, that's why it's called Tailspin. But uh, I can't remember the name of this guy. If you guys can remember what this guy's name is, let me know in the uh, comments below. Kind of tickles my brain not being able to know what this guy's name is. But he still stands up pretty well. And the little thing on the back, his head still uh, kind of uh, moves all the way around. But yeah, kind of interesting little thing. You kind of make it look like he's talking. Hello, welcome to another JHR review. So yeah, kind of a uh, interesting blast from the past. Let's put that guy down. And this is actually from the uh, same show. This is the uh, little kid uh, girl that was in it. I do remember the theme song. It was like, O-E-O, -E -O, Tailspin, or something like that. I couldn't, I can't quite, you know, remember all the lyrics, but I know something like that. It was a very classic uh, little um, theme song. But this is all made out of metal, actually. I think it's like, yeah, it's all made out of like a, a thick metal. You can actually see the metal and the paint right there. It's kind of wearing off. But the uh, propeller actually spins, which is kind of cool. But yeah. What do you guys think? Kind of a cool little blast from the past. Let's move these guys to the side. Right here, 
This is from an anime. This is from Card Captors, or Card Captors Sakura, which they kind of butchered in the uh, English adaption, honestly. But uh, this is a cool little figure of um, one of the main characters. I'm not 100% sure what his name was, but I know he was the other kid. There was the main girl character, and then there was uh, him. So, very interesting little... Uh, kind of a McDonald's toy. And then right here, this is the end of the bag, we have another anime toy. Now this is Bijou. This is from, and she's real beat up because you can see from her age. She is from a anime called Hamtaro, which is a basically a, a TV show, an anime imported from Japan put on Cartoon Network about hamsters and their daily adventures. Um, they had their own like little club. It was kind of like a slice of life kids uh, kind of anime and it was really good. And I watched so many episodes when I was a kid and I'm glad that uh, I have this. I actually found it on the side of the road when I was a kid and kept it all these years. Probably at least 15 years now. But yeah. Here we go. How about my uh, hamster right here? Ghosty meets the fake hamster right here, Bijou from the TV show. Kind of wandering around, kind of confused, like, what's going on, man? He's a uh, albino hamster. Very cute. Let's say hi to the camera real quick. Hello. It took forever for me to be able to uh, pick him up like this. It's kind of a uh, trust exercise, I guess. Once they know that uh, being in your hand, they're not going to get hurt. So the first thing that I have is another, um, I believe I was wrong, I believe this is a bull rock, And this is a black version of the famous 2000s toys, uh, Bionicles. Now these were so popular, unbelievably popular when I was a kid. Like I said, half the tub of toys that I got all these things out of were just filled with like little tiny bionicle parts because you can remove all of these. Most of them were, uh, let's see if we can pop it out, ball and socket. You just uh, pop his arm right back in and rotate it whatever direction you want. And uh, if it wasn't that, it was... Um, being able to remove like these tiny little pegs that kind of keep everything together. Um, this probably was one of my favorite ones. I really liked the contrast between like a uh, neon green and black. And in the top, this one might have one. My other one didn't. Yeah, it does. Right up here, it has this little mask right here. And the cool thing about these masks is that you could actually take these off and for the full size Bionicles that use the masks, with this little thing right here, you could actually attach it to the other Bionicles as well. So it had multi multiple purposes, but then you could also interchange the mask and kind of pretend that uh, you're switching his powers out. So yeah, this was one of my favorite uh, Bionicles. What do you guys think? Super poseable too, if you wanted to just be like... Hey. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the next one. Now this, I actually got a little bit later in life, and this is actually a collectible, surprisingly. So this is Shrek, and uh, super popular when I was a kid, and I absolutely loved Shrek. It was a really good uh, kind of like, I don't know, anti-hero anti kind of uh, movie with a kind of uh, interesting hero character. and. Uh, it's got memetized quite a bit throughout the last uh, little while on the internet, but uh, during the time of my childhood, it was something really uh, nice to look forward to. So, are they going to make a new Shrek movie? Kind of thing. But this is actually a collectible, and as you can see, there is an extreme amount of details all in the uh, fabric and the uh, vest on him. This is actually the scene where he comes out of the tower after getting uh, blown uh, fire at by the dragon. And uh, his head moves. That's pretty cool. His arms move as well. So do his hands, they turn. So they all are able to be 
handled and his legs move as well. I don't have the base for him anymore though so he can't actually stand up by himself very well but uh, it almost looks like he could just, he just start moving like he's in the uh, movie huh? with how much details in here. And yeah, one terrifying thing about this is you can turn his head all the way around like that and he can look kind of spider crawl. So that's, uh, that's something right there. But yeah, Shrek. The next one we got right here is uh, another thing from Shrek. It was from the same set. This is uh, Princess Fiona, the um, uh, human version. And uh, her hair kind of moves around a little bit. It's kind of made out of like a silicone connected to a, uh, what's it called? Harder plastic. And then uh, her legs move and her arms move. That's about it. Not as best, um, not as great of detail as the other one, but it's not bad. But yeah, Fiona. And you know what? And just so we can stay on this Shrek train, you can't have Shrek without Donkey, right? I think Donkey actually stands up pretty well. Let's see. My desk is a little slanted, so it might actually only stand up. I don't know. I'm going to have to hold it. So this is Donkey. Pretty detailed donkey. His mouth opens as well. Oh, that's terrifying. Um, I think it's from here. And in the morning, I'm making waffles. Yeah. So, head turns all the way around again. <laughs> I'm going to crack myself up, man. And uh, the ears move as well, surprisingly. You can actually rotate them a little bit. Like that. I think his ear's actually backwards. Yeah, there we go. Tail moves, so you could rotate it like that. That was a little bit blurry right there. Let's focus back in on it. So yeah, ears, tails, movable mouth. This was probably the dream Shrek set. All right, there you go. First seven minutes of Shrek. Let's go on to the next stuff. Now. We're talking about classic. Do you guys know who this guy is? Put a put a comment in the uh, comments below. I want to see if you guys know who this guy is. All right, and I'm going to tell you who he is. This is the wiener guy, or I don't know if he has a particular name, but I always called him the wiener guy as a kid because, you know, he's the hot dog dude. And basically, this is a wiener schnitzel toy. I think before, back in the day, there used to be a lot of commercials with this guy in it. And I believe I got this in a Wiener Schnitzel kids meal, or happy meal, I'm not sure what they have. And uh, pretty much you just grab him and roll him backwards. And, and he flies off your desk and isn't able to be shown on camera anymore. Let's go on to the next toy. <laughs> Here's a really old toy. I'm not even sure when I got this. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him real quick. This is, oh, drum roll, <laughs> the Grinch. And uh, I think this was from a McDonald's um, toy thing. What's it say on the back? It says, uh, made in China, but I can't read that smaller portion right there. As you see, it has all these holes right here, and these are all bendable points, so you can actually, uh, flex his body around and kind of uh, do a little bit of, you know, articulation with him. But uh, not very much. And honestly, his claws are kind of sharp for being a kid's toy. Uh, I think this was handed down to me. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't remember getting this myself. Or it might have been a garage sale find. Um, one thing, though, if I can find it. Here's one thing that actually I think went with this. This is a Grinch two sizes too small stand and he would actually go and uh, stand on that see if we can get him to stand up after all these years straighten out that foot Grinch what do you guys think interesting little uh, ramp for uh, the Grinch to stand on kind of a funny novelty toy to have not really sure the purpose of the ramp itself maybe uh, he just wants to put himself on display because uh, he's the Grinch there we go next thing that's kind of a uh, 
small show is this uh, Donkey Kong thing. I got this when I was a kid, and uh, I was really excited to get this, actually. It was a candy dispenser. You put the candy in here, and it flies the candy out of there. See? I'll show you. It might be a little loud. Yeah, and then you can load the candy up. It's kind of like a Pez dispenser, um, except it kind of gave you some different types of uh, candy. I believe it wasn't actually Pez brand. But yeah, Donkey Kong. I got this at GameStop when they still carried the PlayStation Portable, like when it first came out. And uh, they used to have a lot of really cool uh, Nintendo toys. I feel like they don't have as many cool things anymore, or maybe they're just really expensive and out of my budget. But that was the Donkey Kong thing. And you can't have the 90s to early 2000s without Stuart Little. Now, Stuart Little was one of my favorite movies, Stuart Little 1, 2. I even had a Stuart Little video game for the uh, Windows XP, I think. Or was it Windows 98? I'm not sure. And uh, it was just like a really good, kind of wholesome family movie. You, you look at it back at, at it now, it's kind of cheesy. But it looks like he's actually splitting apart. He's old. I don't even think he moves anymore, let's see. No, he doesn't even move forward. The wheels don't turn. They're kind of collapsed in there from uh, old age, but... And this is Stuart Little. He is a mouse who was adopted by his human family. And uh, a lot of emotional stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much the movie. And uh, cats. So yeah, a very interesting little Stuart Little toy. And uh, could get a little bit cleaned up. But like I said before in my last video, I do not uh, clean the toys before I take them out. Because I think they should be shown how they have been stored a uh, little bit of authenticity, and I don't want to rub any of them off with like if I was going to use isopropic alcohol, I don't, wouldn't want to uh, accidentally damage them. So yeah. This one I want to clean though. It is very dirty. I have no idea what's on it. But it wasn't mine. It was actually, I think, my mom's. And it is covered in some kind of like, uh, I'd say something greasy. Like it was left next to a stove or something. But this is um, from the 101 Dalmatians. I'm not really sure the name of this particular dog, but uh, it is a Dalmatian. And it is an original Disney toy. And I always wondered if this was going to be worth anything in the future. I know it's a little bit beat up, but I think I could clean it up a little bit. Of course, I'm not going to touch up the paint or anything because that decreases value apparently. But yeah, that was the Dalmatian. Now this guy, I have no idea who he is. And I'm hoping you guys can tell me. I think he might be Speed Racer, but I'm not too sure. He's uh, old, that's for sure. I think he's been taped so he doesn't fall apart. His head kind of uh, wiggles around like a bobblehead. And just like the other one, if you roll him back, he moves forward. But uh, he's kind of breaking from old age. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Got him to go forward a little bit. Oh, now he wants to go. These things, uh, you know how they are. Once they get wound up a many, many times, they stop functioning. But yeah, this is an interesting little toy that I kept a hold of for about 15 years. And you cannot have an anime nerd like me and uh, not have some kind of anime toy. Now this right here, I surprisingly got at the 99 cent store. This is a very cheap Goku, and you actually put him together from scratch. All these little pieces kind of uh, snapped in and connected. He came with Super Saiyan hair. I know I still have it, but I have no idea where it is. It was $1, and I believe it's actually really Bandai Namco. It even has a shiny, um, what's it called, um, toy animation sticker. And, uh, yeah, so... This is, it even opens up right here. We have uh, Goku in there without his hair. As you can see, he all snapped together. But mine, his legs are kind of crippled because um, after a while, the insides kind of came apart. Let's take him out of his little display case right here, which is surprisingly held up good throughout all of these years. Let's move that to the side. You notice that was actually a Japanese packaging too, which is kind of interesting. His head kind of was or his hair was kind of interchangeable. He's kind of an ugly Goku, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, look at his lips, he's like, uh, he's like a kissy face Goku. 
Not too bad though for being kind of an old toy. It was a really old toy, honestly. You could uh, pose it too and uh, have it look like he's doing like a attack or something, like, like an energy beam or something. But yeah, like I said, his legs got kind of messed up so you can really uh, make Goku look like he's damaged or, you know, <laughs> or make him look like he's uh, doing the splits or something. Uh, I have way too much fun with these things. Anyways, his feet articulated, um, if these were still together, which I never took these off. This is actually like a silicone rubber, and unfortunately, they designed this really badly because you build these things which are really fragile, probably should be glued. As you can see, the seams are even coming apart on this one. Um, you slide this over here, there's a lot of um, friction against it, and it just completely tore his legs apart, but because it... Uh, has so much friction it doesn't come apart so his legs are just kind of wobbly and he even stands up with his legs being crushed inside of his pants so I never really felt the need to uh, do anything about that and his head it doesn't really have a lot of flex so yeah this is the Goku figure his pants have a quite a good amount of detail but uh yeah kind of a old retro Goku what do you guys think and for the last one, we have these magic, by gosh, these are magic balls. And they're for doing, um, I'm surprised this box is still together, look at all that. For, they're for doing um, close-up magic. And I'll show you the trick on these, but let me see if I can perform something first. It's probably not going to be able to happen. You see, I actually have a little hole in this one. I tried to turn it into a clown nose when I was a kid did not work out very well, just kind of ruined the ball, as you see right there. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually perform it because uh, nobody's in front of me right now. Um, so basically what happens is these are extremely um, uh, squishable. So the idea is, is to have someone concentrate on one of the balls and pretend, well you have one squished I believe, already between your fingers you grabbed out of your pocket you can say okay so you have one ball in your hand right you're like okay okay so you tell them take this ball put it in your hand right and then you're like okay i'm going to put this ball in your hand now right and then you do it really quick like that and tell them to clench their fists and then you say boo 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 or whatever you want to say and then magically they multiply and if you're really good at like sleight of hand tricks Man, you can make this thing look absolutely magical. I had a friend, Ryan Fox, and uh, he's actually does magic shows. He showed me these. And uh, these are probably the easiest way to get into uh, like close-up magic. So if you guys are interested in that, I definitely would look up these red magic balls. But yeah, I have another interesting toy. I've been in kind of a toy kick lately after going through my 90s toys, and these things really reminded me of something that would be kind of a 90s toy. You ever remember those sticky hands that you get out of the quarter machines? Well, these guys right here, their center and their hands are made out of the same thing. But the concept is, is these are like ninjas and they flip down walls. How cool is that? So we got ourselves like a lightning ninja, a uh, kind of drawn looking ninja and this guy right here too very interesting stuff it says toss your ninja at a smooth surface and watch as it flips tumbles and rolls away down the wall let's go ahead and check it out guys alright so right off the bat we have a little cover on the back so these things don't get all um, non-sticked in the packaging. Oh, yep. Yeah. So we have this uh, center right here, which I don't know how long these guys will last. That's a very thin. Uh, same with these things. Look at that. It's hanging on by a thread. But uh, let's go ahead and test these out and see if it actually works. And, uh, 
Oh. Oh. It actually did a flip. I am really surprised. I did not think this thing could do a flip. Let's pull out one of these other guys and see how they perform. Oh no. That's definitely a point away from me. Look at that. His arm fell off immediately out of the packaging. Like I said, these things are super thin, so... Oh no! Both of these guys broke. So two... Oh, let's pull this guy out of here. So two out of the three of these guys broke immediately out of the packaging. I just pulled them out of the plastic part and it stuck on there. And without really much force at all, it just ripped their hand right off. Um, as you can see, it's only attached by that tiny little thread. And uh, they're not made very well. It's also kind of a cheap plastic. Though these were a dollar, so I can't really judge too much. But um, I am. Primarily because half of it's broken. Um... I definitely wouldn't look at these guys for like purchasing options. Um, I can't say everyone's going to be broken, but I definitely would not suggest this as something that I would recommend to you guys. But I'll let that guy chill up there for a second. And today is going to be a little bit of a short video, but I found this really interesting slot machine candy dispenser, and I thought this is too cool to pass up. We got to check this out. So. Let's go ahead and take this packaging off right here. I've always been kind of a fan of uh, slot machines since I was a kid, because when you're a kid, slot machines just seem like video games for adults, you know what I mean? Video games you're not allowed to play, and uh, I always wanted to. Um, surprisingly, now that I'm older, I don't want to spend the money to play them, but uh, every time I have gambled, I've always come out on the positive, so that's something, right? Let's go ahead and see how this works. Pretty cool. So immediately um, you get one out. It says 100% payback. So mm. and this is um, definitely a uh, kind of sweet tarts kind of flavored candy. Really good actually. Um, Kind of reminds me of those little, um, you know, actually perfectly, those little fruit candies that you get out of the machines that you uh, turn the handle with a quarter and gives you those little fruit-shaped uh, hard candies. It tastes just like that, if you know what I'm talking about. This is what the front looks like. And then back here it shows the nutritional information, which I'm sure is uh, garbage because <laughs> it's candy. So it says total sugars, 18 grams per one piece. That seems a little bit high. 20 grams of sugar for one piece. I don't know if that's right. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. It says serving size one. Serving size one piece, 20 grams. Oh, I might have to take my insulin. <laughs> um, and then right here it looks like if you pry it open, you can actually replace the candy in here. If you look at that. That's pretty cool stuff, so you can use it multiple times. It's not just a throwaway toy. Let's move this back over here. So, the thing I'm wondering is, is there actually a winning spot that you can get? Yeah, there is. There's only one winning spot because these all turn consecutively. So let's do a few, a few of these. Oh man, I guess this time I didn't get a payout. Maybe you don't get a payout every time. Nothing. Maybe it's not in the slot. Oh no. Hold on. Do I have to get onto a certain one to win? I was close. 
I don't know, maybe I'm feeling like... I'm feeling like I just shook it a little bit. That uh, maybe it needs to... Oh, there we go. So, as you would expect from little tiny kind of plasticky toys like this, um, what happened was, is one of the balls they were probably touching, and it wasn't able to dislodge this ball to fall in the little chamber in here for when you're pressing the handle, so it wasn't allowing it to come out. I'm not going to eat that one because I'm unsure about how much sugar is in these, and since I'm diabetic, I don't want to get sick. Um, let's do it again. And now it's working perfectly. Let's try it again. No. So... So I shook it again. Okay, and there we go. So basically what's happening is if these were smaller, they'd have a lot more room to be able to fall into the little chamber right here. But because of how big they are, it's causing a blockage to when you pull the handle, nothing's coming out unless you give it a shake. So if I rotate that a little bit. Yeah. So I probably cut all that out, but I shook it about five or six times and you definitely need to do something like that in order to get the little ball to fall out. But honestly, if I was a kid, I really wouldn't consider this broken. I would probably just consider this uh, needing to be shaked to get it get to get it out. And honestly, guys, I think we can all agree, if we were kids, we just open the side door and eat all of the candy. Yeah, it's an interesting little device. Um, it definitely is a cool little desk toy. If you wanted to have it like maybe uh, your job or something, give it a shake, tell your coworker to pull the handle, and then, I don't know. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. Would you consider this a total waste, or would you consider this something that a kid would still like? And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and just one more quick thing. If you want more, you might be interested in my free newsletter at findcalm.com. There I share other uplifting and relaxing things that I find and enjoy myself, be it unintentional ASMR or intentional ASMR, or just ideas and videos about having more peace of mind and being more content and positive as I struggle with this myself. So again, head over to findcalm.com, it's free and I won't send you any unwanted stuff and I think you're gonna like it because I put a lot of effort into it. Thanks.